Hello， 大家好，诶，我系 Margaret， and welcome to my little Cantonese corner。今日二零二一年五月廿二号星期六 ，Today it is Saturday the twenty second of May twenty twenty one， and I'm here in Hong Kong to say hi。Thank you for joining me here， and I I have to say a big thank you to all of you who watched the Apple Daily interview，、uh, which is on the Apple Daily website， and I think I can put a, a link below if you'd like to see it。I actually haven't seen it yet。And that's because I am a big fat chicken when it comes to watching myself on video. And because on the day it was last Monday, we met at 9:30 in the morning, and we're basically recording the yamcha and the playing mahjong and then the interview until 8:30 at night. So <laughs> a lot was covered, and I guess I'll go in and see it maybe later. Maybe I have to watch it with somebody. Uh, but anyway, I haven't seen it yet, so I hope that you did enjoy it. So far, comments seem to be good, and I just hope that it truly conveyed my feelings toward Hong Kong because I have been here. This is the first time you're watching. I've lived in Hong Kong since 1988, so a very long time. And I have to let you guys know my book. So no advertisements on my channel, but this is my advertisement. I wrote a book called Roll with It. Roll stands for respect. Responsibility and rules, keeping an open mind, listening and learning, and this helps. Well, this is、uh, geared towards kindergarten-aged children to teach them how to have healthy relationships by first basing it on respect, responsibility and rules, keeping an open mind, listening and learning. So I would love it. The Amazon link is below. If you'd go support my channel by purchasing a copy of my book. Now, if you are thinking of moving here to Hong Kong in 2021, I am excited for you. Because I remember back in 1988 when I first came to Hong Kong,、uh, there were I met a whole different a whole range of people, and some of them were older, well, my age now, but at the time I was like 23. So I met people who were in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and their perspective on Hong Kong at the time was probably similar to what I'm feeling. Is that you have that perspective of time? You've had you have had a lot of experiences here in Hong Kong. The way that it was, and Hong Kong is a place that changes so rapidly. Back in the late '80s, you know, the Joint Sino Joint Declaration had just been signed, and so people who had been here since like the '60s, '70s, '80s were feeling like, you know, this is changing so much. I don't know if I want to stay here. The handover is coming. Tiananmen Square happened in、uh, '89, and so I had just been here a year, and that all happened. And I remember my mom at the time was like, "You've got to leave," and. You know, when you're in your 20s, you're thinking, you know, I why? You know, this is exciting. It's an adventure. You don't look at things the same way. I remember my 23-year-old self during Tiananmen, during all the changes, the handover, and it was like, this place is awesome, and it still is. There've been massive changes, but it still is an amazing place. So, the number one thing is to just come here if you have the opportunity. To come and live and work in Hong Kong, come, full stop, come. Don't even think about not doing it because Hong Kong is still an amazing, wonderful place, and Hong Kong needs you. You're at a really crucial time in Hong Kong's history, and you have the chance to be actually doing something pretty amazing, and that is supporting the community, being involved, and、um, and just lending your time and talents and energy. To making Hong Kong、uh, even come to a a different, but an even I don't want to say even better because it just, all depends on your perspective, right? I mean, people that lived here in the '60s, '70s, and '80s might be like, "Oh, those were the the days." For me, it's like, "Wow, you really couldn't you could not have beat the '90s and the run up to the handover, and even after."、Uh, so, anyway, it all all depends on your perspective, but you are needed here. So please do come to Hong Kong. Um, also, I would say、uh, the next one is to get involved. And once you're here, get involved. There's a lot of volunteer opportunities.、Um, there are a lot of meetup groups. There are a lot of different ways that you could become involved in the community. I would especially recommend following before you come and after you do following young Instagrammers and YouTubers that、uh, record videos on Hong Kong. And that includes. I love watching J Lu.、Uh, J Lu is great.、Uh, also follow uh, Dan, um, her partner, 
who just started his own YouTube channel about learning Cantonese as well. And they have such a great, vibrant, young uh, outlook on Hong Kong, and I love it. Uh, Taylor R is another one. These two are huge YouTubers and Instagrammers, um, influencers. And Taylor R recently just did a video, for example, in the French community in Hong Kong and visiting different places uh, within the French community. Um, there isn't like a place, you know, kind of thing. They're all over, but but uh, great, great, great videos to watch and to um, feel more connected to that younger kind of crowd in Hong Kong. Of course, you know, going out, you're going to have your community at work. You're going to have your community um, maybe with friends that you meet outside, but do get involved in the local community. And you could be doing something as easy as taking public transport. Don't rely on taxis all the time. Taxis are great. Don't get me wrong, but, you know, get that bus app and take the bus, you know, take the minibuses, take the, you know, do things that local people do. And that is going to be one way that you show respect for where you're living. Don't just stay in your little bubble. Um, and also, um, I think you kind of have a responsibility to Hong Kong when you're here to do that. Um, so yes, do get involved. And um, another way to do that is to support the arts. Um, go to see live music. Go get involved in the cultural aspects, whether they're Western, you know, jazz groups or, or something like that, or uh, or local um, local groups. Uh, they've been out of work for the whole COVID year. And if you're coming here in Hong Kong and that's back on, go see live music in Hong Kong. And okay, third thing is, it is freaking hot here in the summer and very humid. So if you're coming from a climate that's cold and you're used to uh, summers being nice and warm, but in evening it drops down and gets cooler, yeah, that doesn't happen here. It is hot 24 seven and humid 24 seven. So I remember when I first came to Hong Kong and this is the same now, you'll maybe go out for the night and you'll step outside at like one, two in the morning, expecting it to have significantly cooled down. Yeah, no, it doesn't happen. Um, it, it's just hot and humid all the time in the summer. So you're gonna wanna probably bring clothes that are super light. Well, actually, you know, I wouldn't even bring clothes at all if you don't have to because you can shop here and you can get clothes that you, you know, probably wouldn't get elsewhere. Um, of course, they do have Gap. They've got Uniqlo and H&M, Cotton On, um, 68. All these shops my daughter loves, loves, loves to come back. And I have a pretty long list of things I need to get for her to bring back. But um, the clothes here are, are uh, easy to get, not that expensive, and suitable for the climate. But if you are a big and tall guy, like my son, he's 6'3", and he weighs, mm, well, I don't think it matters what he weighs because I really don't know, but he's a big guy. It's very difficult for him to buy clothes in Hong Kong. So if that's you, then do bring the clothes because he'll like walk into his shoe store and ask for a size 14 shoe, and they'll bring out like the one pair if they even have that. Um, so he doesn't have a lot of choice here. Socks, yes, socks are big. If you have big feet and you need big socks, you will not find them here. Or if you do, and you know where to find them, comment below because uh, that's something that we haven't found. There is a little stand, like on uh, Fai Yung Gai in Mong Kok. So you take the East Rail line, you get off at Mong Kok East Station, you get down to Flower Street by the kind of flyover, go down the escalator, turn, oh, this is right, turn right, so I should do it this way. You turn right when you get down onto the street level and uh, you turn right and then on the left-hand side, halfway down, is a shop that will sell a lot of um, bigger American-sized clothing. And it's kind of funny because I remember when I first found it, I told my son, I was like, I found this place where I can actually get you clothes. And I took pictures of some and everything and he was like, yeah, no. He goes, ah, I'm not gonna wear Tommy Bahamas and what were some of the other labels? They were more, I don't know, he's not into that, I guess but they do have brand names that can be found there. So that is a tip if you are bigger, but if you're not um, and you can fit into the size clothes they have here, then definitely I would, I would do that. So let's see, that was, yeah, the climate. Oh yeah, and I should tell you, if you come from a warmer climate or even if you don't, the winters here are freaking cold. And the reason they are, it doesn't snow here, so you're probably thinking like, why? Before I came to Hong Kong, I looked at the map and if you trace the line of um, 
latitude across, we are in line with like Florida, which makes sense for the heat and humidity, but sure doesn't make sense when it comes to winter. It is so cold here. Um, not for long, but with the humidity, it's like that wet, bone chilling cold that just goes right through you. And for the most part, most, almost all the houses here are made of cement. They're just like poured concrete kind of thing. So once that gets in and it does not leave, it's like a bad guess that you just want to kick out, but you can't until it starts getting warmer around, well, really around April, May. Now it's really hot outside. So, so that's, that's my tip. If you're coming here, just be prepared for the extremes in the climate. And, um, it's awesome. I mean, it's done wonders for your skin. It's really good to live here in a hot, humid climate uh, climate for your skin. So that's a definite plus. Okay, so that's, I think I'm down to five now. But, um, well, yeah, five would be, and you could probably guess this, is learn the language. Um, I think we have to be realistic that it's only a matter of time before Mandarin becomes the official language of Hong Kong as Hong Kong more uh, becomes more assimilated into the greater Bay Area or the GBA, which, okay. Um, but in Hong Kong, everybody speaks Cantonese. Everybody that is Hong Kong Chinese, born and raised here, that is their native language, their mother tongue. And you would be showing a whole heck of a lot of respect and taking some responsibility for, for taking that burden off them to speak a language that's not their native language, English or whatever. And English may not be your native language either, but learn Cantonese. You can learn from me here on Cantonese Corner or at Cantolingo. You can learn from all the other great uh, Instagrammers or uh, YouTubers that are also teaching Cantonese uh, to you. Take advantage of that. And I'm hoping to kind of revamp my Cantolingo site as well so that I kind of did it really old school, which was intentional because I wanted to do like a straight on beginner's course because that's the way I learned and I wanted my kids and my, well, they speak Cantonese, although we have to be practicing that more in the U.S., but, um, uh, but for maybe grandkids or, or future generations, that they would have a way to actually learn Cantonese. Uh, so I did that, but I am kind of hoping to revamp and do it more niche or more kind of like speaking to your mother-in-law or speaking to your, your um, partner's family, that kind of thing. So I, I am going to be working on that over the summer. So yay, but your job, if you're moving here in 2021, is to learn Cantonese. As little as you want or as much as you want, just make sure that you're making the effort to integrate, assimilate, uh, feel like you belong to this amazing community. So with that, I will say goodbye. Don't forget, if you would like to support my channel, go check out a copy of my book. I'll put the link below. It is called Roll With It. I'm working on the second book and it will help you, help your kids, or just yourself um, cultivate healthier and happier relationships by rolling with it. All right, everybody, if you like the video, do subscribe to my channel, click the like button, the notifications on, all that good stuff, and I look forward to seeing you next time here on my little Cantonese corner. Bye.